started, man. Travis, hey, TM Nerdy, thank you so much for coming on my little show, E-Man's Top 3 New Comic Book Day Picks. And this is going to be for July 28th, 2021. Welcome, TM Nerdy. Station, thanks for having me, man. Station, oh man, no, it's a pleasure. It is my honor to have pretty much everyone's best friend <laughs> <laughs> on my show. I love it because you see someone in the YouTube chats and right away it's Station E-Man, Station Joe, Station Jen. It's like, you're the first one to say hello to people. It's like someone even mentioned, they're like, Travis is, 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 like, is like your very first my space friend that one guy it's like because you're always there I'm like that's absolutely true because you're always just stationing everyone i love it Station. yeah i like to be friendly and it's a good thing i mean it, it brings a lot of joy and a lot of happiness to um to 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 the youtube channels and it's absolutely wonderful that we have a community like this where everyone's just friendly i don't see any real competition in our community which is fantastic and to have people like you out there just greeting anyone it just makes being a part of the comic book community in youtube just that much more wonderful well thank you let's kick everything off travis you are on eman's new comic book day picks this is going to be for july 28th 2021 let's get things going right now tm nerdy what is now of course to everyone watching the show these are in no particular order we're just talking about our three favorite books that we're going to be picking up on you comic book day so travis talk to me what's your number three pick for new comic book day my number three pick would have to be robin number four i like a lot of people say like it's it's kind of like a mortal Kombat type book but there's more to it. It's more complex of a story than that. Like, who is running the Lazarus Island now? Where is Rachel Ghoul? And that, like, how they introduce Flatline. I do love that character. I hope they flesh out that character a little bit more. And Ravager's there. I always love Ravager. And after issue number three, we kind of get a small reveal at the end. So issue four will answer a little bit of questions that we're having so i'm pumped for issue number four now the artist by now writers from uh, is joshua williamson who i'm hearing is doing a fantastic job with robin it's kind of up and down but it's still a consistently good series from what i'm hearing and art from jorge corona and if you don't know him he did middle west to my understanding and he's he's done a couple of fantastic covers i actually have his we live number one cover which is beautifully drawn so i can only imagine what the art's like in robin because i don't read it oh it's fantastic like it's so vibrant and splat like they do justice in this book like when it needs to be dark it's dark when it needs to be bright it's bright and it's just great and the like the ink ink is just fant freaking tastic in it, the book. Well, let me read a little bit about Robin number four. Damien Wayne versus his grandfather, the immortal Rajal Ghoul. For years, Batman's son avoided learning the ways of the demon from Rage, but now that training may be exactly what Robin needs to win the League of Lazarus tournament. Plus, Ravager follows the mysterious respawn into the secrets of Lazarus Island. Um, I've said this before on the show and I'll say it again. I don't understand what I just read, but it <laughs> sounds like a fantastic journey that Damien is going on. What do you think is going to happen in issue number four? Uh, I'm not too sure. I think a lot is going to be answered of like who took over because it, as it's noted that Rachel Ghoul is not in charge of Lazarus Island anymore. So like, we're going to learn a little bit about why he isn't, what he's been doing. And then with Ravager following respawn, she's going to figure out a little bit of what's happening on that Island as well. Now I'm following your lead and I've heard it pronounced the same way. And I like 
pronouncing it Raj Al Ghul. It just sounds more sinister. But I've heard Raz Al Ghul, which makes sense. I don't know it. What's the correct pronunciation of Mr. Al Ghul's first name? <laughs> Uh, a lot of people say it differently. Like I know in in Arrow they said Ra's al Ghul, and I like to I like to say Ra's al Ghul. I like Ra's also. Al-Ghul. Yeah, Ra's just it just like I said it sounds a lot more sinister to me. I've never I would love DC to kind of just put a pin in it and say, okay, you guys, this is how you pronounce it. I would love that. DC, I know you watch the show. You guys are big fans of the show. Let me know. Let us know. Let let TM Nerdy and I know how do you pronounce R A apostrophe S. Yeah, they did it with Tynan. they they told us how to pronounce his name. So why can't they do it with Rachel Ghoul? Exactly. Waiting, DC, I'm waiting. All right. Well, hey, awesome pick. Robin number four. Um, I you know, I was told to read it. Maybe I'll go back and pick it up when when the trade comes out. I'm not much of a DC Marvel guy myself, but I'm also in for a good story and into a, a good adventure. So let's see what happens with uh, with this. And I might end up picking it up by the end. Let me get into my number three pick, TM Nerdy. My number three pick is going to go to one of Volt's comics. Do you read any of the Volt comics by any chance? No, actually, I don't really pick up a lot of Vault comics, to be honest with you. No worries, no worries, because this one right here is actually a very fun read. It was fun to me. This is this one is Witchblood number five, writer Matthew Ehrman. Artist is Lista Sterl. Now, this follows the adventures of a witch who pretty much breaks away from a coven. She's a little rocker biker chick. And then all of a sudden you find out these bad vampires are now after like the lead person in her coven. And because of loyalties, she has to help. She didn't want to. She's kind of like, God freaking a okay fine i'll do it and it's following her adventures through south what through the southwest and i thought it was this this was a fun read now i'm not gonna tell you it's one of the best books out there because i'll admit it isn't <laughs> but if you want to break and just have some fun with the book witch blood the witch blood series was really fun and i believe this is the finale right here issue number five because well i haven't seen any solicitations for number six so we'll see what happens but um let me read a little bit about it for you here for you yana altacoya and texas red make a pit stop in the strange ghost town known as sargasso for fuel they're right on the tail of the hounds of love which is this vampire group that's after uh you know all the people in in yana's coven are they headed for the promised land to find out in the supernatural western fantasy epic witch blood number five the waters of sargasso That's not going to tell you a person who hasn't read this book anything other than there's three names and there is this group that's out there. But trust me when I say this is one of those books that's just just fun. Just have fun with it. Yeah, I heard that there is that like Vault usually only does like five issues, don't they? Typically. Yeah, typically. However, there is another book out there called... um, shadow service and number 10 is coming out that's their uh that's one of their books right there so but i do know that volt's one of the companies that does like quick little mini series let's see what happens let's see what people say about it if it comes back great if it doesn't well they did their run yeah i heard that i heard it's really good the, i know a few people that are picking it up and they're really enjoying it like uh, my friend jay strick he he's enjoying it it number one made is like pick of the week yeah, yeah, that was uh, which blood ended up being one of my picks of the week um, during its run. Just again, it's just a fun ride. Well, that's my number three pick. TM Nerdy, we're going to talk about your number two pick. Go ahead and talk to me. What is the second book that you're going to pick up? New Comic Book Day. Uh, that would be Infinite Frontier number three. And I am pumped. I just read issue number two today. And so I'm super pumped for issue number three. I like the direction that they're going with this book. It, it, if you guys don't know what Infinite Frontier is, it takes place right after the events of Death Metal and like the Batman Who Laughs and stuff. And they're kind of just fixing the multiverse. And so you have multiple 
Earths working together in, in a fashion. You have President Superman, you have Roy Harper, who has come back from the dead and is now a Black Lantern, and you also have Darkseid coming because Darkseid just is. Dark side's the big baddie. See, I didn't know. I've heard of Infinite Frontier, and I didn't know that this was kind of a continuation of the Metal series. So it follows Metal through Death Metal and all of its side stories. And now Infinite Frontier is what happens afterwards. And you say that now Barry's in charge of fixing the timeline. Yeah, Barry is out there right now. Like it. If you read issue number two, you notice that he's actually got trapped. Something has happened to him and, and that people are trying to look for him in issue two. And then you have the whole Captain Adam is back, but he's from a different world. And at the end, he just pretty much says Darkseid is. And then just an explosion. So, and before that, Roy Harper also, who is now uh, a Black Lantern and back from the dead, he also says Darkseid is. So Darkseid is pulling some strings. And if you remember from Death Metal and stuff, Wonder Woman kind of died. She is actually, she's in the multiverse, but in kind of a celestial being type of form. So I'm, I'm waiting to see her actually pop up in Infinite Frontier. There's only six issues and then it'll be done, but we'll see what happens there. Let me read a little bit about Infinite Frontier number three. Writer Joshua Williamson, artist is Hermanico. Barry Allen's history with the psycho pirate isn't pleasant. The Flash encountered his mind-bending villain all the way back in the original Crisis on Infinite Earths. And it did not end well for the Scarlet Speedster. For the first time since his death and rebirth, Barry runs afoul of this foe. Hopefully, it will go better this time around. That is, if the even bigger villain behind the pirate stays out of the fray. Or if, if President Superman of Justice Incarnate sticks around to help win the day. That's crazy. There's a lot going on with that synopsis right there. Does that make sense to, to a person who's reading Infinite Frontier right now? Yeah. It happened in the first issue where uh, the Flash was fighting fighting a new uh, psycho pirate, and like because he's been out of the game for a while, so he's just arrived now in a new suit and, and that he looks badass, and, and it's just fantastic. And, and like I said, they're bringing back older characters and redoing them in a way that's making us fans of DC ha really, really happy and joyful. Nice. Well, I'm glad DC's doing good and, and, and they're keeping you interested. I'm I'm probably going to I'll be honest. I don't really say this. I'm probably going to pass on this only because I have literally all of the metal and death metal books and I I, I got burnt out. <laughs> I got burnt out. I'll probably pick it up on a trade, but we'll see what happens. Um, let's go ahead and talk about my number two pick for new comic book day now earlier we did talk about this writer artist and how her image book well you know there's there's opinions about it but she has another image book coming out and and with this writer artist right here i, I don't want to say it's hit or miss but she has put out consistently good reads even though i guess even though the other one that's happening right now is technically not her writing or her art it's by her team, but Mirka Andolfo has another image book coming out. Sweet Paprika, number one, written and drawn by Mirka Andolfo. Talk to me, TM Nerdy. Do you do you know anything about this book right here? I do, and I pre-ordered it, so I'm nice. be getting it. And I, I love the art in it. I love the concept of the book and that and it kind of people are saying like it's kind of like uncanny but it i think they're going in a whole different route than uncanny or like what was that book that she had on sacred sorry oh oh okay no i didn't hear about that one yeah and they're like oh it's gonna be like that but i'm like oh uh, no I, I think they're gonna go a whole different route this is like a she devil type deal and like again she looks like a businesswoman I love her design. I absolutely love the design of uh, of Paprika. Um, even like Ariel Diaz has a wonderful cover for that book. 
Uh, it looks uh, it looks great. And then reading reading the synopsis of, of the what the books, it sounds fun. Let me read a little bit about it right here. Paprika is a successful businesswoman, a New Yorker of Italian origin. Job and career consume her, forcing her to neglect her personal needs as well as her friends and family. Her heart is broken from a previous relationship and its consequences, and a rigid upbringing has made her a very introverted person. She wants a romantic relationship, but she doesn't know what she's doing. Not like Dill, a nave and suave delivery boy with an angelic attitude, handsome and always surrounded by beautiful women falling for him. Come on now, don't you want to be a guy like that? Having beautiful women falling for you. This I hate this guy already. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have a worry in the world and this makes Paprika very nervous. But he's the guy who could help her with her feelings and with sex. Ooh. Bridget Jones' diary meets Sex in the City and a pinch of the Devil Wears Prada and a new international hit by acclaimed creator Mirka Andolfo, who's also written Unnatural and Mercy. It just sounds fun. It just sounds like just... Again, sometimes you just need fun, a break away from superheroes and, and you know, world ending events. Sometimes you just want to see a train wreck happen. And that's what I feel like this could be. Yeah, I do like books like that. Like, uh, I don't know if you're reading Marjorie Finnegan, Temporal Criminal. I enjoy that series. And that's just a train wreck all around and, and just a fun, fun ride. I... People always say Mirka Elendolfo is always hit or miss, and like lately she's kind of been missed for a lot of people, but I'm not listening to them. I like the synopsis, I like the design of the character, so I'm picking it up and I'm going to give it a try. I'm definitely going to pick up a couple of uh, first issues. Um, I feel like this is a book that my girlfriend might also want to read. Let's see what happens. Um, she's reading like Stray Dogs with me right now. She was reading We Live. Let's let's get something a little bit more feminine in here. Let's see. Let's see if she can, you know, see if she she can dig this one. Also, I'm, I'm looking forward. Like you said, like I said, her design of Paprika is very cute. I really like it. Let's see what happens with this. All right, TM Nerdy, we are down to our number one pick. Again, this is in no particular order, so we're not saying this is our favorite book, everyone out there. So, TM Nerdy, talk to me. What is your final, your number one, that one pick that you're going to get for New Comic Book well, Day? This one is probably my number one pick and will always be. I've had the uh, writer of this book on my channel and I'll give you a little backstory. The TV show came out when I was five or six. And so it's like one of the first TV shows that I've ever watched that I fell in love with and that, and what this writer is doing with this current book is paying homage to, to the kid in me, but making it better, if that makes any sense. And every time I read this book, I, it just reverts me back to childhood. I, like I'm just, I'm there as a kid, five years old watching it but playing it out in my head while reading it. And it's just fantastic. And that number one pick is Transformers Beast Wars. And growing up, I grew up with G1. I was an OG Transformer fan. So when Beast Wars came out in the 90s, I was like, I'm not feeling the art. It doesn't look fluid. But as I got older, I appreciated the storytelling behind it and the amount of technology that went into creating something like that back in the 90s. Now, going back and then watching Beast Wars, that was actually one of the best stories ever told in cartoon history. And for them to come out with Beast Wars, the comic book. Now, I want to ask you as, as a Beast Wars fan, is this a continuation of the cartoon or is this a whole new separate storyline that they've started with the characters of the cartoon? Uh, it's kind of like a retelling, kind of like changing it a bit and stuff. Like if you read the book, uh, uh, Dinobot's defection happens later on in this comic series rather in the tv show because his defection ended up happening right in the very first episode pretty much mm. and so like they play it out a little bit longer and like show you why he's defecting because in that series it was all about him just wanting to be leader over megatron so he ends up defecting this way it made it kind of more honorable 
which like I love Dinobot and he's like an honorable warrior type character. So they they play, played homage to him in the comic book more. Nice, nice. All right, you know what? Uh, I think you're convincing me on this one, TM. I think you're convincing me. Beast Wars, let me talk a little bit about this. Writer Eric Burnham, arts from Josh Burcham. Savage Landing, part six. It's a siege on the Axelon and the Predacons attempting to end the Beast Wars before they even begin by bringing down the Maximals at their base as Megatron and his loyal troops launch their assault. One bot on Optimus Primal ship decides to put it all on the line to help the others turn the tide. Ah, I hear you now. I hear what you're saying. Man, this, um, this, so this is pretty much a retelling, like you said, of the original series. Now, is this going to be continuing or is this a mini series? Do you know? Uh, it's going to be continuing as far as I know, because like when I talked to Eric, he said like he, when we talked, he was already doing up uh, issue 11 and moving oh. on to issue 12. So I am thinking it's an ongoing, but we'll, we'll see how sales sales. Hopefully it picks up and hopefully it does well because you know, I know beast wars, transformers, GI Joe, anything came out in the eighties and nineties, those cartoons, those really tug at the heartstrings of the kids of that era. And it sounds like it, it definitely grabbed your attention. And it sounds like you're enjoying just immensely. And I love it. Oh yeah. I'm enjoying this. That's why I go crazy about this series. And that's why every time I, I get my books and stuff, that's the first thing I read is that because like, It'll it'll always be not my number one because nostalgia trumps all. Yes, I feel I will talk to you about that later on. But as you can see behind me, there's some transformer toys that uh, I'll show I'll show them over to you here in a little bit. I'll let you know a little bit about here. All right. Well, let me get into my final pick for new comic book day, July 28th, 2021. TM Nerdy. Do we know who James Tynan the Fourth is by any chance? I heard of him. Like, yeah, some I, guy. I think he, he, he's kind of doing stuff. He does some things. Do you know about the artist Martin Simmons by any chance? He does kind of weird artists or things. If you don't know, I'll understand, T.M. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm talking about Department of Truth number 11. I had to put this one in my top three. And I understand Department of Truth really isn't for everyone. There's been some really wacky issues. But the last issue was quite heartbreaking um because of the events with bigfoot and a person who's pretty much spent his whole life trying to hunt him down are you paying attention to department of truth i am i haven't read the latest issue yet but it, it's on the backlog so i i am going to be getting to it here soon just like crossover if i spoil it with this synopsis it's not my fault okay <laughs> <laughs> well let's read a little bit about department of truth number 11 because the last issue like i said was a heartbreaker america was built on a lie that's never quite come true the cracks in the idealistic vision have inspired dangerous people to do horrible things in the name of an american that's uh, in the name of an america that's never really existed Hawk Harrison knows the genuine truth of this country, and he's ready to give Cole Turner a history lesson. This dude, Hawk, in the book, it's one of those people where he works for the government and you cannot trust him. However, you know he's got all of the knowledge in the world that, <laughs> that could probably keep you alive. I'm genuinely afraid of Hawk. This guy's nuts. What What are your thoughts about how the direction of this book is going so far? Uh, I, I enjoy it. Like I said, I, I'm a bit behind, but like Hawk, yeah, I agree that a character that you need to be around, but you're generally scared of is like probably the worst character. Like you're always, always nervous around that character. So like I could just imagine how... Um, what was his name? Uh, Cole. Cole could feel like every moment, every time he's around this character, could just, I, I fill up with anxiety. I could just imagine how Cole's feeling. 
Exactly. Exactly. Filling up with anxiety whenever you're around Hawk is probably the best term to apply when it comes down to this. He's he's scary. He walks around with an upside down USA flag hat and it just pisses everybody off. And he does it on purpose and he knows it. So I uh, I can't wait to see what direction this is going to take us to because this is very x-files ish and with the tv deal coming it's been announced james tynan has been doing nothing but hitters to a point where major studios are paying attention to his work and they want to develop something out and he's got a lot of work cut out for him and i think department of truth something's killing the children the nice house on the lake i mean all those something's gonna happen something huge is gonna happen and, and there's talks that maybe wind might have something in development now that's a rumor that is i'm gonna put a big word right here it's gonna say rumor but yeah, even his other book crazy. wind may may have something coming i actually just got wind from john's comics with kids and like mm -hmm. i got all five issues and i just like like read them all and i love wind so i'm, I'm I, if that, that gets turned into a series that'd be amazing now i love wind for a lot of reasons it's such a good ya story it's a good you know coming around story i love how <clears throat> it's it's adventurous even for a kid what i love about it is that james tynan was able to write a book that my 11 year old daughter uh would love to read also and she loves reading that with me and i've told the story several times on the show and i don't want to bore people already but <laughs> it's one of my favorite books to read with my daughter and i love it myself yeah it is a, it's a fun read for all ages and that and it's just you don't have to worry about like you, you say you like having fun books and that marjorie finnegan is definitely not for kids and, and that but like wind is something you could just have fun with and that it's for all ages and stuff and adventurous and it's funny to see james tynan like jump from something's killing the children or batman and and, and come and write something like wind which yeah. is totally polar opposite exactly exactly and that's the talent of james tynan the fourth is that he can write books you know adventure books you know suspense uh horror and then just young adventure it's it's absolute talent with james tyne in the fourth well that's it for our new comic book day picks for july 28 2021 my friend my guest of the show tm nerdy thank you so much for coming on the show and hanging out with me and talking to us about your top three picks do me a favor go ahead and plug your shows let everyone know how they can find you on social media well you can follow me on instagram at tm nerdy um but i also have a youtube channel also named tm Church nerdy oh dirty oh <laughs> whoa <laughs> uh, i usually have every wednesday is whiplash wednesdays with the pcp army bad batch you can find me on fables instagram channel where we just have like a big show and tell with the community of instagram we invite people on they show us what they have we show them what we have and then you can after that i always have a chat with the comic community that drops on that day right after uh the fable blame hashtag blame fable show on instagram and then after that, I'm usually on the Tomorrow Cinema channel later on that night. But before that, make sure to check out my boys Nick Comic Culture and Big Herm Collectibles, who also drop videos in between my video and Tomorrow's video on Whiplash Wednesdays with the DCP Army Bad Batch. So many name drops in that. I love it. Tremoro, Fable, Herm, everyone in the community. I love it because that's what we're all about. We're all about uplifting and help helping everyone else, making sure that everyone follows each other, make sure everyone watches a couple of each other's shows. It's amazing and I love it. And that's how we're going to grow this community all together by doing things like that, by sharing everyone else's show. Thanks for doing that right there, TM. I really appreciate it, my friend. <clears throat> and well for me don't forget to follow me and my other podcast remember i co-host the c-list villains podcast new episodes are released every saturday on itunes spotify or your favorite podcast app and we do also do a live show every thursday at 8 p.m pacific standard time on our youtube channel the c-list villains podcast come and hang out with us when you can and if not catch us on the rewind and drop a comment 
let us know how we're doing, my friends. Well, that's it for this week's E-Man's top three new comic book day picks for July 20. 28th <laughs> with my friend tm nerdy where are you on this side to my friend tm nerdy right there to everyone out there thanks for hanging out until the next issue deuces station <laughs>